you can keep your plan if you are satisfied with it. If you like the plan you have, you can keep it. If you like your plan and you like your doctor, you won't have to do a thing. You keep your plan. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. If you've got health insurance, you can keep it. If you like your health care plan, you will keep your plan. If you've got health insurance, you like your doctor, you like your plan, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your plan. If you have insurance that you like, then you will be able to keep that insurance. If you like your doctor or health care plan, you can keep it. If you like your health care plan, you can he keep your health care plan. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. If you like your private health insurance plan, you can keep your plan. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. If you like your private health insurance plan, you can keep it. If you want to keep the health insurance you got, you can keep it. If you like the insurance plan you have now, you can keep it. And if you like your insurance plan, you will keep it. So if you like your plan, you can keep your plan. If you like your plan, keep your plan. If you like your current insurance, you will keep your current insurance. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. If you're happy with what you got, nobody's changing it. Those who can afford to buy insurance, um, but don't, can afford to do it, but don't, pay a fine. And if they refuse to pay a fine, there's a mm -hmm. threat, uh, as there is with lots of tax uh, fines, uh, there's a threat of jail time. And the Senate removed that provision in the Senate Finance Committee. Do you think it's appropriate to have a threat of jail time for those who refuse to buy insurance? You know, what I think is appropriate is that in the same way that everybody has to get auto insurance, and if you don't, you're subject to some penalty, that in this situation, if you have the ability to buy insurance, it's affordable, and you choose not to do so, forcing you and me and everybody else to subsidize you, uh, you know, there's a $1,000 hidden tax that families all across America are uh, are burdened by because of the fact that uh, people don't have health insurance, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with a penalty. Now, what those penalties are, uh, I think they have to be high enough that people don't game the system. Uh, on the other hand, I think it's important for us not to be so punitive that people who are having a hard time uh, suddenly find themselves worse off because of health care reform, and that's why there have, we built in some hardship exemptions. There may be situations relatively rare, where even after the subsidies that are provided, it's still very hard for people to afford uh, to get the health insurance that they need. And we should anticipate and build in those, um, uh, those hardship exemptions. But I, but I think the general broad principle is simply that people who are paying for their health insurance aren't subsidizing folks who simply choose not to until they get sick and then suddenly they expect free health insurance. That's, that's a basic concept of responsibility that I think most Americans abide by. But as the Senate puts its bill, its final bill together, and as the House and Senate pre prepare to vote on a, on a after the conference committee, yeah. they should know. Does the president think jail time is inappropriate? Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure that's the biggest question no, that they're asking question. right now. It's a so question. the uh, uh, I, I think I put out the principle uh, that. Penalties are appropriate for people who try to free ride the system and force others to pay for their health insurance. Okay. It is true that what's happened is the website got overwhelmed by the volume. We have had a few slowdowns, a few glitches, but it's, it's sort of a, um, a great problem to have. It's based on the fact that the volume has been so high. Our top issue when it comes to the glitches has been the extraordinary number of people uh, coming to check out plans. So this is all about the traffic? Nice try. But day seven at that Obamacare website is still having problems, so forget overwhelming demand. Web experts like Russell Reeder are finding flaws with the design of the site itself. I I explain. Sure, Neil, thank you. The well, Media Temple, this is what we do for a living. We run hundreds of thousands of websites for big businesses, small businesses, all kinds. Obviously technology is very difficult, but uh, unfortunately when you launch a website there's going to be some traffic. Uh, we launch websites with millions of uh, hits an hour. Uh, it, it, it really looks like from our analysis that 
there is more than just uh, traffic that has brought this down. Americans will have until March 31st to either sign up or be enrolled in a health plan. But what happens if you do not comply, especially since the website will not even be fixed for at least another month? Let's bring in the judge, Judge Andrew Napolitano, Fox's senior judicial analyst. Judge, great to see you. Ali, Bill, it's a pleasure to be How with you? you. Okay, so if you don't sign up and you don't pay the fine, which is going to be somewhere between $100 and $700 based on your income, then what happens? Ali, I have to correct you. According to the Supreme Court, it's not a fine, remember? Mm. It's a tax. Mm. Even though the government did not argue that it was a tax, and even though the people challenging did not argue that it was a tax, the Supreme Court has called it a tax. And because it's a tax, you have to pay it first and then seek your refund. This is insane. So people are going to have an additional tax bill. They must pay that tax bill and then petition the IRS. You see, like this, begging the right. IRS to have that money paid back to them because there was no insurance policy made available at the time the tax so was due. So th that's because of Judge Roberts' ruling, is that what you're saying? It's because of the Supreme Court's ruling that it's called a tax, but a tax is treated differently than a penalty. If, if, if you or I speed and we are to be punished for the speeding, we have points assessed and we pay a fine. That doesn't happen until after there's a trial and we're found guilty. But if you or I owe a tax and we think it's too much, we pay the tax first and get the money back later. That's exactly what will happen to these unfortunate individuals who will not be able to obtain insurance coverage because Obamacare doesn't work, because the computer system couldn't get them through, through to the insurance carrier, and because the deadline passed. So it's like garnishing your wages. Well, it is the moral equivalent of garnishing your wages, yes, because if you owe the tax and don't pay it, your, your employer will collect that tax by taking it out of money that will otherwise go to you and sending it to the IRS. And so if somehow you get out of paying the tax first, then are you breaking the law? Yes. I thank the gentleman for yielding, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, Mr. Speaker, if you're at home and you were sort of flipping channels between the football games and C-SPAN, and you flipped on and only heard the majority party, you'd think, wow, what a great plan. I mean, really. You'd think people are just going to fall all over themselves, and all these adjectives and declarative statements it just sounds wonderful, until you bury, look inside that bill, and you find handcuffs. Now, I'm not talking about figurative handcuffs. I'm talking about criminal penalties. Criminal penalties that have been mentioned by the gentleman from Texas, criminal penalties that have been mentioned time and again on this floor. We've heard from the best and the brightest all afternoon, and not a one of them have answered why it is you have to criminalize people to coax them into a plan that's fabulous. It makes no sense. And this isn't my words. This is actually coming from the Joint Committee on Taxation, a letter that was written, ironically, with uh, Chairman Charlie Rangel as the chairman of that committee, released 48 hours ago, that says, in fact, if you don't comply with the individual mandate, what happens to you? You can be subject to five years in prison, and you can be subject to a quarter of a million dollars in fines. And the other side, with all due respect, with all the adjectives and all the flourishing speech, have failed to answer that question. And I submit to you, if we listen today, if we listen to the remainder of this debate, they will be silent in terms of a good answer as to why it is you need to criminalize people to coax them into a plan.